this branch coming right down to this tree here is making contact with the primary. So we're gonna avoid getting too close to that. But that is something we'll be able to take care of on our own without calling for any backup. Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're gonna be covering responding to no power calls when alone. So there's, there's two main reasons why at our company we respond to no power calls, trouble calls in general alone, and are still able to perform safely. Now, it, it's important for me to mention first that if ever I do request backup or a second guy, I am absolutely never refused. It could be for a reason as simple as it's a long drive out of town, I've been working long hours and I'm tired. Maybe the roads are bad. Um, lots of snow on the roads, but they're they're not too bad today. So those those two reasons. The first one is we've got a pretty rural area. You can drive easily an hour out of town, and a lot of times, if not most times, I'm able to rectify the situation on my own, following all of our procedures without taking a crew off of another job. The second reason being that if I were to respond with more resources and other crew, if it is a job that requires more work, oftentimes it requires more material, perhaps a transformer, a pole, some off-road equipment. And for, for us to respond in full force with all that equipment without knowing exactly what we're doing, it's simply not efficient. So even when responding to a bit of a mess, I, I can show up on site call the foreman, the supervisor, let them know exactly what we need and they can organize for that equipment to show up from the office without having to have driven out of town for an hour and a half for no reason. That being said, when I do have an emergency call where it says in the comments, high voltage wires are down, uh, poles broken, stuff like that, I will get a second guy or a second crew to head out with me right away. So before we jump out of the truck, um, just a couple things I'm gonna cover. While working alone, I'm not allowed to go hands-on any wire that's been energized over 600 volts. So primary wire, 7200 volts right here. If that wire's down on the ground, I absolutely cannot touch it. Even when it's de-energized, grounded, permits in effect, all that stuff. The most I can do is make the scene safe by de-energizing it via gang switch operated handles, breakers, um, the extendo stick, hotline sticks, put the grounds on and keep people clear of the scene. A lot of times during vehicle accidents, that's precisely what I'll do. I will respond, get on the phone, get a second truck on their way if I know I'm showing up to a mess. I usually arrive there first. I'm able to shut off the power if it's not shut off already, get a set of grounds in the line, and keep everyone clear until that second man arrives where we can go hands in the wire and clear the area enough that work can be performed. So I haven't jumped out of the truck yet, but what we've got is a no power call. A single customer no power call. You can see right there in the background the cutout is open so we're gonna jump out take a walk see if this is a job where I have to take a crew off their job to come help or if it's something that we can sort out on my own and we're gonna bring you guys through the whole process so let's jump out of the truck here now uh, it's important even when you're just simply patrolling guys make sure you have all your PPE on especially there's a lot of hazards right now with ice buildup on the trees and stuff. You're walking into the woods, something could fall on your head. We do have the kind of open lines aren't grounded. So if we do come across any primary down, we're definitely going to be keeping our distance. It's going to be a heck of a walk. There's a snow bank here that's as tall as I am. Zoom out here a bit. Let's see if we can't make our way up through the snow. Oh, this is nice. So it looks, looks like I see something already. Looks like there's a branch right on the primary wire. So again, I'll repeat myself, even though this line is not energized, it is not grounded. So, man, this is a, this is some hard train to get through here, but even, even though the line is open, 
Ah, come on. We, we can't go too close to that tree. If there, if there was back feed of any kind in that primary, it could still track. So it looks like, yeah, that branch, hard to see on camera. This branch coming right down to this tree here is making contact with the primary. So we're gonna avoid getting too close to that. But that is something we'll be able to take care of on our own without calling for any backup. Be nice if we could get across that water. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna attempt that right here. So we're gonna carry on, patrol the rest of this line here. We've got all kinds of distance from that tree that's in contact with the lines. And it's awful hard to see on camera here, but this is the last span. The transformer is on that dead end pole out there. And I can see the rest of the lines. The primary is clear all the way up to that dead end. So what we'll do now, it is a single phase sideline, uh, spur line, some people call it. So I know there's no other crews here in the area. I'm not gonna need a permit on that single phase sideline. I, I cannot operate that switch, however, whatsoever, until talking with my dispatcher. That being said, there is an emergency clause in our procedures that states if we understand 100% what we're doing, we can open a device before speaking to our dispatcher. The reason I say understand what you're doing, you're not gonna go up to a three phase main line in an emergency situation, take your extendo stick and just start yanking those cutouts open. You could draw an arc, make, uh, make the situation a lot worse. Oh, this is nasty here. However, that, that, that clause is in place, so if you do arrive, there's a vehicle accident, there's live primary on the ground. As long as you are 100% confident in what you're doing, we can open switches if it's a matter of life or death, or if there's a major fire or a major hazard to ourselves or the public. And we do have to report what we did at the soonest time practical. So in this case here, we're gonna get out some sticks and, uh, and this is embarrassing, I'm out of breath. We're gonna get out some hot sticks, rubber gloves, we'll clear that tree, and then we will speak to my dispatcher. Let them know what we found, what we did, and get permission to close that line back in. So hopefully you guys can see that okay. We've got our extendo stick, rubber gloves, and without getting too close to the butt of that tree, we're gonna see what we can do to get that tree top off there. You can see some burn marks on the primary now that it's wiggling around. So we got one piece, and there's still another guy in the back. Two marks in the house, and this should do it. There we go. All right, so we've got that tree all cleared off. Now we'll go back and report to our dispatcher and get permission to close that back in. So a couple things I wanted to mention. Rubber gloves, guys asked about testing. You're to inspect them before each and every use. A simple pinhole in your rubber gloves can, it can be bad. So you do an air test, 
I'll show you guys that in another video and visual inspection. However, they are shipped off once every six months to be professionally tested at our, our workshop at the head office, as well as all of our stick equipment. You can see this guy here expires May 2023. So we still got a few more months on this guy. Let's uh, let's head back to the truck. It's getting cold out here. All right, guys, so we're back in the truck. Thank goodness, it's freezing out there. We got a deep freeze coming tonight. It's supposed to hit minus 30 degrees Celsius and minus 44 with the wind chill. That's gonna be nasty. So, I'm gonna show you guys here real quick. This is my line diagram. That's the single face side line we're on. Those of you that watch the channel, often you'll know the, the blue lines, three phase, red line, single phase side line. So just to show you guys in the field, what we've got here, there's our three phase main line, single phase side line with our cutout that's in the open position. So the line number we're on is 8004, it's upside down there. So 8004 line, switch number S047. Our work location was pole 393 to 393 R1. So we're gonna report our steps now to our dispatch. power call and I uh, want to bring up ADO 4 SO 47 SO 47 yeah go ahead so when we arrived ADO 4 SO 47 was open there was two treetops on the primary between poles 393 and 393 R1 I've got those removed with six and gloves looking for permission to refuse and close ADO 4 SO 47 4 SO 47 open into tree tree, two treetops there between uh, 804 and 393 and 393 or one that you remove the sticks from every gloves. So yeah, you can go ahead and refuse and close 804 SO 47 with a 12 amp fuse and report. 10 for you set up permission to go ahead and refuse and close 804 SO 47 with that 12 amp fuse and report. Report. Perfect, won't be long. All right, so we've got permission to refuse and close. We're gonna to to take that door down, put a new fuse in it. We'll do that all with the extendo stick and we'll close that in. All right guys, the camera's up in the back of my truck so you probably can't see my face, but here all we gotta do is swap out the blade attachment for the hammerhead attachment. And we're gonna remove that cutout door which should be fairly easy. It's not an overly high pole. All right, so we've shown this a few times now in some videos, but we might as well go through the whole procedure here again. If I can get my phone to sit in the snow. Um, this is our fuse. That's the tail hanging that blue. I have mentioned in the past, sometimes that door will be frozen shut and you'll see that tail dangling down. Just because that door hasn't opened, doesn't mean the fuse isn't blown. That's the most obvious indicator. It, uh, didn't blow real bad, more or less melted off. But basically, that fuse pulls this spring mechanism down right here. That goes up in the barrel, holds that tight. And when that fuse releases, that spring pops and that'll drop the door down and swing into the open position. So you don't have to tighten these guys up a ton. You may have heard guys mention not to over tighten the fuse. That's because the fuse link, which I'm not gonna break this fuse open, but the fuse link that's in here, it's it's tiny. It's like the size of a twist tie. And if you come right onto that, 
it can weaken that tiny little weld that's in place. We might be able to see it on the top end of the fuse here when I take it apart. So that whole barrel is still intact. Let's see if we can see inside it at all. Oh yeah, there you go. It's just, let's see if we can get that on camera. You can see that tiny little fuse link. Camera's having a hard time zooming in. This little guy right here, that, that 7,000 volts is traveling through that tiny little wire. That's, it's intentionally that small to make it a weak enough point that on a system that can deliver thousands of amps after a mere 12 amps, that's gonna melt off and drop that open. So to refuse it, and I'm doing this with my bare hands, guys, but if you have an old cut-out door that's, that's all the fiberglass, make sure you got gloves on because you'll have fiberglass poking your hands and it'll bother you the rest of the day. So pretty simple to refuse. We're just gonna shove that wire down in through the fuse barrel. Sure that's fully seated there just sits in on the top we'll put that cap back on yank that spring down now one little trick it it doesn't matter a whole lot guys but like i said when you reef on it you're putting a lot of tension on that chances are you'll be fine if if you want to wrap that around reverse it'll make sure that as you're tightening that nut it doesn't pull that wire extra tight or what I do a lot of times I just push my thumb down on the wire to give it a tiny bit of slack before tightening that up you don't need to grab a wrench and come right onto that it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to hold that in place and you cut off your slack snow plow is going by you should have lots of room there but you can see now we've got a little bit of slack in that wire so it's not going to stress that tiny little wire All right, so we're all set to hang our door and close that back in. So just before I hang that door, this isn't my favorite type of door. You can see it's got the wide open hole or you can grab it from the side. Some of the newer styles have a taper right here. So when it sits on the hammerhead, it's, it's not gonna fall off. They're, they're a lot easier to hang, especially when it's real windy, but not a whole lot of wind today. Uh, it's not a real tall pole, so we shouldn't have a whole lot of a hard time getting that up there. Hanging the cutout door, you always want to keep an eye on it in case it does fall off your hammerhead. Hard at or not, it's not going to feel too good if that hits you on the head. So if ever the door isn't fully seated, a good trick is to grab the butt of it, pull down, give it a little wiggle. Now we're ready to close. We're going to look away as we close. Position. And that's it. All right, so lines closed back in. Customer is happy. Before we roll out, I'll run up to the house, check the meter, make sure it did come on in case the main line was out. But if if the main line was out, there's a real good chance I would have heard about it by now. So we have to report back to our dispatcher as a last step. Bit of, bit of radio traffic here right now, so we're gonna hang tight for a minute. I'd like to report that I refused and closed 8004, SO 47, and it's holding. Refused and closed 84, SO 47, with 10, 10 or 12 amp fuse, and it's holding. Time for this track. 21 clear. 182 clear. All right, guys. So that's 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 it. Um, today was a a real good example of how we're able to safely restore power um, when when working alone. It's it's not ideal all the time, but like I said, never have I been refused extra help, regardless of the circumstances. However, it, it is up to our discretion, and we do have strict rules and procedures to follow whenever we're working alone. So I hope everyone learned something from today's video. Appreciate you guys watching as always, and we'll see you all soon. So we're simply gonna shove that through the cutout door or the fuse barrel. But you wanna make sure when you open the package that you don't lose the little washer, which I have just lost.